This is the Blockade Pimple Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, Jared Morgan. Hey there, Chris. Hey, everyone. How's it going? Uh, yeah, so uh, I feel like we've been away for a while. <laughs> it feels like a while. You know, uh, th- this is what happens a... when when Zen decides to uh, take a month of vacation. <laughs> mm. Yeah, there's not a lot to talk about. Uh, uh, the doldrums there's... of summer. Well, yeah, that's true. Yes. But it, it makes you, like, you know, we're all about commercial digital pinball here. And it kind of speaks to the fact, which we're going to be talking about in the show today, that there's not a lot of commercial pinball options other than Zen around at yeah. the moment. Yeah, for sure. So for sure. it was it's interesting, interesting uh, position at the moment, which we're going to explore a little bit further today. Yeah, so uh, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this last time. But I picked up yet a new position. Uh, oh, did you just get another one? <laughs> yes. All right. Oh, that's nice. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so now I am uh, what we call a uh, Black Spire Outpost facilitator, which means anybody that's getting hired on to work at Black Spire Outpost, I am now training them how to be a proper Batuan. Oh, um, right. And I spent a week having my brain melted trying to memorize a 36-page script that basically takes you through an eight-hour day because we're supposed to know it by heart. <laughs> what? Really? Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> oh, jeez. That's brutal, mate. E- even better, oh. we weren't allowed to take the script home. <laughs> uh, really? Yeah, so so all day long, we were just going over it and trying to rehearse it and trying to get it and learn it and rehearse it and do it again. But... Um, it was freaking all of us out. And then we finally got to take it home during the weekend. And then I had my very first uh, session just this past Tuesday um, to deliver the content. And it was with a, uh, there was three other trainers there. Um, That's how they do it. They have four of us delivering the content. And it went so much better (laughs) having them around because basically you only have to deliver a tiny section of the, the content then. And right. Is that normal? Is that how it works? Yeah. Yeah, Normally, and then in, even in if practice, you forget, yeah. even if you forget some of what you're about to say, then one of the other people will pop in and continue to say it. Oh, that's um, good. So you yeah. essentially they've got it set up so you're you're there to support each other. Yes, throughout the the process, and that's good because you know if if you've ever been that those people who are watching the show who you know have sat through training before for anything, it's normally really boring and that's what they're trying to make it sound like it's more like we're just having a conversation rather than spewing powerpoints you know what i mean yes yeah yeah no that's a really it's a really good way of delivering training and i I like the fact that it sounds like by having multiple people you're probably also going well even though it's scripted there might be the ability for new inductees um to actually ask questions and then have a broader response. Well, that's exactly um, it. Everyone. Yes. Yeah. That's mm. exactly what happens. Um, and that was the part that was missing from our training was we, you know, you get to these sections where you're asking people questions and there was nobody to ask the question to. <laughs> so, mm. so instead of having time to think about what's coming next and actually maybe have what's coming next be flowing from what the person is asking, you're just like in a void then going, okay, mm. and now I'm going to ask this question to nobody. And uh, now I'm going to ask this, and now we're going to move on. You know, so... Um, it felt weird. It felt weird, but, man, I have not had to do any kind of memorization of this nature since I was in college getting my theater degree. <laughs> so, right, yeah. Um, it was it was kind of fun dipping, dipping the toes back into that, you know, methodologies of how to memorize and learn things, but... Right, yeah. I envy it is those people with a photographic memory. Learning. Yes. It is just rote learning what you're doing there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, that was uh, that was where that was. That's a times. that is uh, quite the quite the thing. Well, the the week for me has been a weird one. So Sienna uh, wasn't well when I when we did the changeover. Um, but you know, just like sniffles, nothing. Mm, yeah, just it's the, you know it's winter here, so it's like you know the regular sort of things you see. So anyhow, Monday comes around and her her ketone levels are higher than we prefer and Kim couldn't get them down. So she spent pretty much the whole week in hospital. Oh, um, and just, you know, it, it went from 
ketones are high, which means that, you know, there's lots of cortisol in the bloodstream, which is a reaction to sickness um, if you're a type 1 diabetic. Um, but, yeah, it took, you know, um, a dextrose drip um, to bring it back down again because it's weird. If you're sick and you've got high ketones, you've actually got to eat so that the insulin has um, carbohydrate to unlock in the system and then enter your cell wall. So um, if you don't have any carbohydrate in your blood, you, you get this buildup of insulin in there not doing anything and not being able to unlock the cells and, and transfer energy. So you kind of got to eat. And if you're feeling sick, like in the stomach and you don't want to stomach food, you, it, it, the process doesn't work. Oh, right, yeah. So yeah. you need dextrose, which is obviously sugar, um, to go through your system so you can dose and so everything can work. So it's a it's a bit of a vicious cycle. Anyhow, um, she got out on Friday. So I had Zach for the week. And it was kind of cool because we just got to chill out as dudes and, you know, just uh, go out and eat the food that we always prefer to eat. Yep. Um, that um that normally is a bit tricky because sienna has specific tastes that she enjoys right and it's often not stuff that zachary and i like <laughs> um but um yeah it was kind of a chill week and then you know the the other news is that we had the i got my big gaming pc i was tossing out whether to go and get a, a virtual pin um but i decided my money would have been better spent buying a lounge room pc um that i could just connect up to my my sony tv um, and play Steam and Epic on my lounge. And I made the right decision, Chris. Yeah, because you found out, <laughs> uh, to, uh, didn't you? Because <laughs> it was re it's really good yeah. like to yeah. play video games on your couch yep. on your really big, powerful PC. It is. That, was so, the, that was the hardest part about deciding to abandon console pinball for mm. playing it on the PC. So I was like, yeah. I enjoyed sitting on the couch you know, 65 inch TV playing. And mm. now I'm sitting, you know, in front of a 27 inch monitor playing, you know what I mean? Now, yeah. grand, a seat. you're closer, but it's still not the comfort of your couch, you know, uh, no. doing that way, you know, with your feet kicked up. So, um, yeah, there's a difference. Yeah, it's good. Like, it's really good. And the, the TV I've got, um, because I've got, I upgraded the car significantly. So the, the laptop I'm using here behind me, that has a, a RTX 20, uh, 2060 in it. And the one I've got now is a 30, 30, 80. Um, so it's a significant jump up and it does ray tracing. Nice. So, so what I'm finding is in FX, the tables, It's I was trying to describe it to you before we yeah. started the show, but it's sort of... It's like a hyper realism layer that gets applied to the table. Like everything looks just a little bit more photographic. Um, and it's quite a quite a surprising thing. Like the flashes are really like enhanced. Mm -hmm. Like the lighting obviously big given ray tracing. It it makes all the light sources really pronounced. Um, so it's it's quite a different feel when you're playing it. Um, so yeah, that was my week. It was good. Good and bad. Um I guess. We're going to dive into some pinball, but before we do that, just uh, for those of you that uh, want to stick around till the end of the show, at the end of the mm -hmm. show, uh, going to be talking about that new Predator movie, Prey. Just putting that out there. Um, oh, heck yeah. Yeah. So yeah. stick around for that. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> um, the biggest news, um, which I didn't even know about it, and I don't think Jared knew about it. We got a, uh, got mm. the, the heads up from Pinball was 45B, was that... Mm. Uh, the Embracer Group, who we all know has absorbed Zen, um, as well as other companies, they yeah, went ahead and absorbed another property, and <laughs> that is they now have the rights to uh, Tolkien and Lord yeah. of the Rings and such. It's it's a massive deal. It's the they've acquired the um, the Middle Earth Enterprises, and that's significant. Because Middle Earth Enterprises owns the worldwide rights to Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit film yeah. trilogies, as well as like Games, a whole lot of other stuff, books, everything. Yeah, so yeah. they're like the, I guess the umbrella. I call it umbrella organization that like literally sits on on the massive pile yes, of gold. Yes, they own the IP and can determine <laughs> who gets to play with it. 
Yeah, basically. that's exactly right. Yeah. Um, and it's from um, they, it was originally ho- um, owned by the the I think it's Saul Zaints company. Okay. Yeah. Uh, which I'd never heard of, obviously, but they've they've owned everything since 1976. So obviously, when the Tolkien estate um, became available um, in 1976, they took it up and they've been sitting on it ever since right. and helping people license from it. Um, so the question is, <laughs> what does this mean for us <laughs> and Zen um, and Zen and Pinball? A well, um, couple of thoughts. Mm. First one being, and, and for everything I read was kind of saying the same thing. Um, obviously, Amazon has their TV show coming out um, just literally, guy, was it two weeks from now, maybe? Um, yeah. This has nothing to do with a Amazon deal. Um, no, no. If, let's say, as we know, the whole purpose of all these mergers and everything that got Zen excited was because it's going to open up a whole bunch of new IP to them. Obviously, if Embracer own, you know, has this IP, that's going to allow Zen to potentially play with it. But does that mean that the yeah. Zen would be doing uh, then this Amazon show or even being able to do the the New Line Cinema movies? No. They still would have to seek a licensing agreement with oh, those companies. Yeah. Um, but And there's still actors that need to be paid, all the usual stuff that goes right, along with the right. licensing that we bang on about. But if they wanted to create their own designs and their own caricatures of those characters... Of the books. Uh, of the books. Because they could go straight from the lore of the books. They would not yep. have to worry about what was there in um, the the movies. They could, they could literally ignore it and make their own worlds up. Yep. They'd be more mm. than welcome or be allowed to do just that. So Heck yeah. it's kind of... Will Zen go that route? Don't know. But I have a feeling Zen's going to be playing with this property. I mean, how could you not? That'd be like... This like, is again. It, it's signing up with Disney, and then Disney saying, "Oh, but we're not going to let you touch Marvel or Lucasfilm." So, then what's yeah. the point? <laughs> you know, yeah, well, I'm sorry, but no, um, no, they are going. They, I don't think it's going to be. Obviously, it's way too fresh. The ink, is oh yeah, not yeah, even yeah, really yeah. dried yet. But coming into like, I reckon mid next year mm-hmm. to potentially the end of next year, mm-hmm. 2023 we're going to start seeing some pretty interesting creations coming through from Zen on this, I reckon. If we put Zen into the it takes them nine months from go to, to finish uh, to do something, yeah. Mm, I think that's the sort of time we're going to be looking at. But we've got to remember, too, that this isn't the only thing that's on their dance card. Like, this is new. Oh, yeah, this is brand new. Yeah, exactly. But so other I, things have Mel, to get shuffled about. There, there's, there's a roadmap already at play yeah and unless this was in that roadmap then it may even be after everything or things may well, be I mean, I'm, I'm sure that um i'm sure that mel had an inkling that this kind of thing was going to be happening you know what i mean it's just Probably. as as with law licensing things it's hey we're going to sign this license we just need to fill out the contracts push it through you know, all that kind of thing. And I imagine also, I mean, we keep on talking about Zen. Uh, mm. There's other game studios that are within this Embracer group. Um, I'm sure the property is going to be, you know, getting spread around. <laughs> so you could think of it like this too. You could go, okay, so Zen has a couple of routes here with this with this material. They could cut their own world and universe or they could do what they've done a fair bit recently. Um in some of their newer tables and collaborate with another studio in exactly. the embracing group yeah. to do it. Like, you know, we saw that with um, World War Z. Mm-hmm. Um, so once the property is set it up, then they use base a pinball game around that universe because yeah. all the all the properties are there and they don't have to invent something brand new. So they could do it themselves or they could wait and then do an adaptation of something that comes yeah. out. So so many so many opportunities here to do something really cool um as for should you get your hopes up over you know zen doing Stern's, lord of the rings lord of the rings, Stern, lord of the rings. Or, or even jersey Jack's Jack's Hobbit, Hobbit. Um, yeah, yeah any of these 
I mean, have they, have they signed licensing deals with either of those? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> Has um, New Line Cinema had they cut a contract with them for? No. For, well, no. well, speaking of, you think about no. this. So New Line, who is owned by Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers is mm. currently going through their own merger right now with Discovery. Oh uh, really? Oh, you didn't know this? No. Oh yeah, this was this went through. Um, the 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 paperwork got signed at the beginning of the year. Uh, mm. but right now Discovery is starting to flex all their muscle and that's why HBO Max is suddenly getting hit with a slew of cancellations and stuff being, content being pulled um, oh. because uh, 70% of their scripted programming which w- was not for HBO but for HBO Max, right? So Max. Yeah. HBO is the cable channel, HBO Max is the streaming channel that carries HBO content. Um, but there right. was certain content that was being developed exclusively for the app. Um, well, 70% of that content has been slashed. Whoa, um, 70%? Or, or, excuse me, maybe not the content, but the staffing got slashed. Um, wow. Yeah, oh yeah it, it, it got ugly really that, fast, and a lot of people went, what the heck are cuts. they doing? And they're th- yeah. what everybody's afraid of is the Discovery, um, who is basically, it sounds like Discovery is the one that acquired HBO, not the other way around. Um, oh. Discovery's boss okay. is basically, you know, they're they're really good at uh, non-scripted entertainment. And it's cheap. And oh, yeah. so they're thinking that he's trying to push through that kind of content to then send to the streamer. To which everybody's like, this ain't what we signed up for. <laughs> we don't want this. Um, no, we want original. We all want of this to, yeah, all of this is to say, um, you're going to have a difficult conversation with Warner Brothers right now if you were trying to. Um, you, and, sounds like based on what you told me, you wouldn't have a conversation because they'd just go, yeah, no. Nah. It might not we're, be we're the not time to, to anyone. Yeah, you, need to, you need to let the dust settle before you uh, start approaching that. So, yeah, I wouldn't get your hopes up, folks, for the existing physical machines that are out there that are based on uh, Lord of the Rings. Um, well, I mean, and the other point is, well, Zen doesn't have Stern. And that's and what I'm saying. don't have JJP. That's what I'm so, saying. You, you already don't have those. <laughs> How are you going to get then, them? And then you throw in that, you know, to the mix. That's a lot of things you don't have. Um, yeah. Uh, so I think you're more naturally going to be seeing... Could I see them licensing with Amazon? Yes. Oh yeah, that I think would be much more possible, and because that is actively in production at the very moment with the actors, uh, getting all those contracts done up and everything would be much easier than yep. going to a property that's twenty years old, you know, in the theaters. So. Oh, and trying to dig up the archives? No way. No, 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 I, no. You're right. Doing an active license and like an active engagement with that with that franchise that's being produced now would be an easier get i'm not going to say it's an easy get because licensing is never easy chris no but plausible i would say yes yeah Yeah. so that got us thinking that's obviously down the pike and in the future um what's the rest of this year looking like for digital pinball and so i started kind of nosing around and going oh that's interesting oh that's hmm Huh, and having a lot of huh moments. So hmm. I thought that we would uh, we would kind of hit upon some of those and uh, kind of give our take for what we expect for the rest of the year. We did this last year, probably in September, I think, or late August, right around the same time, um, hmm. because basically you we should know the roadmap uh, for physical products by this time. This is when everything is announced that's going to be coming out for holiday. For Christmas, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Because if you've been into a Costco recently, they've already got presents. They just haven't gotten the Christmas trees up yet. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Even down here in Australia, we're seeing... Well, at the moment, we're seeing Halloween stuff. um, Right, but there's all the gifts that they always have. There's always an uptick in Lego at this time of year, right? Every single time, there's like more and more big Lego sets. Like, I think I've got like a... Um, at, at Walker in there at a, like 160 Australian at the moment. Yeah. Like, you know, someone's going to be happy to see that underneath their Christmas yeah. tree, I can tell yeah. you that, you know. Um, so one of the things that got me thinking about was, because we talked about this last year, was are we seeing a uh, Gen 2 of either At Games, Legends Pinball, or Arcade 1-Ups Pinball? 
Mm. Um, so I went and nosed around, and uh, my first thing with Arcade One Up was how readily available are these things? Um, where I discovered no store carries them. You can order but, online, order only. but nobody has them physically in on site on the showroom floor. Yeah, essentially. on the showroom floor. Um, you can order them up from Best Buy, and it'll take about five days to arrive at your location right. to pick it up. Uh, if you go onto the website for Arcade One Up, it shows there again. You can order them up. What I <laughs> when I say crack up, um, it's not really funny, but it's kind of funny. Uh, so you guys remember that they jacked the prices up on all the machines? Yes. Um, right. Well, now they're on sale for six hundred dollars. <laughs> Oh, so they're back down to their normal price. They're back down to the normal price, but with a big old tag saying $150 off. I'm like, that's such a jacked up way of... A, if you bought one at the $750, the inflated price, why did you you do that? Um, You should have known better. And then B, that now they're advertising it as if it's on sale. And it's like, no, like that, was, good, that was always the Good guys, price. RK, one up there, giving you a discount. Aren't they nice? Yeah. You know? Right. Oh, I hate that kind of tactic. Um, but yeah, we do actually see the occasional RK one up cabinet on the floor at Costco here. Mm-hmm. Um, they, But it feels like we're getting the dregs. Well, like see, only... I was fully expecting to see last Christmas uh, a pinball cabinet at Costco, and we didn't. Um, yeah, and I think the only machine that they had was uh, NBA Jam, or yeah. yeah, we just got NBA Jam down here in Australia. Hey, like in yeah. the last month and a half, that's when they actually had them on the floor at Costco. Yeah. So, so then, that shows you the delay and just how long it takes to get down here in Australia. Yeah, so so then I was kind of nosing around Arcade One Up site, and just in their arcade machines, they just made the announcement about NFL Blitz. Which yep. the exciting part about that is they didn't think that they were going to be able to do that, not on the vid card that they were using. So either they cracked something in the code or they've beefed up their video cards, mm. um, which would be a very good thing in terms of a future pinball cabinet because maybe that means it could actually run at 1080p instead of 720p. Um, that would make sense. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, cause that's all it was lacking was the muscle to, to run it at a smooth frame rate. Um, so if this thing's muscly enough to basically handle disc based content, which is what the, the, uh, sticking point for NFL blitz was, um, cause it ran off a of CD ROM as well as boards. Uh, if they've cracked that nut, I would imagine that their vid card is strong enough to be able to handle then whatever, uh, oomph is necessary to bump it up from 720 to 1080 for pinball nfl blitz was so it was a hard disk which always partly yeah it was a it was a hard disk um um game uh a hard drive game and the hard drives always failed so yeah um it was always hard to find an aftermarket board working after a a few years because the platters just died yeah um but also I seem to remember that era of game and people in the comments, please do correct me here, but it was like using the current 3D graphics engine Voodoo, I think, at the time. So you're, that was like the, you know, the very first notion of a video card based solution with like a GPU separate mm. to the, the board. Like it was a, 3D graphics. Uh, I think Williams used it on their Carnival games as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so th- that was floating around very early GPU based board systems. So you're right. There's going to have to be a much beefier board in those games to be able to support that. Yeah. And the other one was um, the um, what uh, Capcom versus Marvel. Marvel. Yeah. Two. So that's another one that just either got announced or it just came out. Um, which is a massive deal for fight fans because this has been held up in like legal red tape for years now. But I feel like and... it's been announced for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And, and that this got has me been looking... rumored for ages. Yeah, so that got me looking at the, the other cabinets that they have and it's like, yeah, they've got their Tron That's... cabinet and they've got their Dragon Slayer uh, cab, 
those kind of had gotten people excited, but there's been kind of a drop off of uh, just arcade one up also, just in terms mm. of because it seemed like for a while they were announcing a new cab like every two months. Um, a, a new Pac Man cab every two months. Well, yeah, well uh. they're still making those. <laughs> Um, I'm sure they are, yeah. So yep. all this is to say, I don't <clears> think we're seeing another pinball cab from Arcade 1-Up. Definitely not this holiday season. I think your speculation there is 100% correct because a while ago, somebody found the roster of games that they were planning on releasing and there was no mention of pinball on there at all. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think you're right on the money there. Um, so that's pretty disappointing. Yeah. Um, because I feel like all that hype and all that excitement of people bringing in a physical digital pinball machine into their home at a three-quarter scale has just withered. And that yep. brings me over to At Games, who also yeah. has done nothing new with their cab. Um, they haven't added it's, anything. They haven't redesigned anything. It's the same as There's no old. hardware iterations mm -mm. that... Uh, that I've seen anywhere. Again, correct us if we're wrong. We're not super in at games anymore. Again, because everything dried up and it, it was there was noth nothing. And again, there about. it's um, when I did a uh, search for local Sam's Club because I know that's who was carrying it. Um, they were showing nothing within 250 miles of me, uh, which leads me right. to believe that for the most part, it got cleared out of any of the Sam's Clubs. And so, if you're going to order it, you're ordering it from at games. Um, Direct. or, or yeah. ordering it from Sam's Club and having it them order it from Ad Games and ship it to their you know location. Um, mm. But uh, even with Ad Games, uh, they just came out with an announcement about um, making a Dr. Seuss pinball, mm. uh, which is like the first new table release it seems like they've announced in a very long time, so ever since the uh, Tato Packs. Yeah, the Tato packs for the last original tables they bought, and they were like that was last you know, again. That was all by December last of year. last year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, there's been a drought and, of and, content. Yeah, and so I, I, I wish I knew what these guys had up their sleeves, if they have anything at all up their sleeves, if they're planning on mm. uh, doing upgrades and stuff, or are they just content now to sell this the units? at the price they're selling it, knowing full well that then people are going to just spend more money on it to mod the crap out of it, um, rather than them trying to keep up with the modders. If they're going to do that, though, why not just make a shell? Like, right. Just make, make the thing a shell and put, rather than putting in so hardware that can run the games on the device, make it essentially like a dumb terminal, uh, using an old Unix term, where you just have a screen and a computer and everything gets connected to externally. You can you know, make it so it's easy to plug your PC in, make, sh make it so all the connections are internal in the cabinet, nice and easy to get to. Just make it so people can mod, mod it really easily. Yeah. Even put in interfaces for solenoids and stuff. I mean, it wouldn't be hard for them to actually make up their own interface board that lets people just drop in a PC and off they go. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of interesting. Um, <clears throat> so, mm. I didn't. I didn't watch the actual announcement with uh, with Doctor Seuss. Um, mm. Again, not having Legends Pinball, I'm kind of like. I mean, I can sort of pay attention to it. I know it's coming, but uh, but I'm not it's a very small market that they're targeting. Well, and, and I'm not going to talk about just an announcement. Um, no, because it wasn't a lot of information. No. In the, like the, the press releases. Okay, yeah, the Dr. Seuss table's coming out. Here's a list of Dr. Seuss properties that will be involved, um, you know, book titles. Right, but it's not um, like it was showing, you know, play field art or no, modes or talking about the actual nothing. gameplay or anything. So It's just the fact that they got the license. Yeah. So, so at some point we'll see these tables, but so that's, there you that's, go. that's the news. We've, we've done our part. Um, <laughs> yeah, we've done it. We've covered other digital pinball. Yeah. So Tick. then, so then I looked over at uh, on Steam or at Zachariah mm. and realized the last table that they released was Postal, and again that was back in 2021. Last year. Last year. So it's uh, we're not quite at a year since they've released anything new, but it's been a long while since they've released anything new. 
Um, well, they released the Tato tables in conjunction with that game, so they would have been busy on that, given they're a small studio. Right, but again, all that came out in 2021. Nothing in 2022. Oh, yeah, 20... yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's where it comes down to when people are complaining that uh, Zen, you're not releasing things. Well, let's actually look at what Zen has released this year. <laughs> um, because I think legitimately... This is where our last hope is um, in terms of what the rest of the year is going to be is literally just table releases from Zen. Because um, even... they are the only company, commercial digital label company, that's releasing any content at yeah. the moment. So here's the big the big goalpost that we know of. One, I know all you console uh, people are waiting for Pinball FX to yep. come out. Um, initially it was a summer release. Obviously yes. summer's just about done. Yep. Uh, I so would, there's been some complications there. I would think clearly, yeah. um, I would pretty much guess that Zen is doing everything in their power to have this come out in 2022. Um, yep. I'm sure that that's gotta be a goal of theirs. Oh, you'd think cause they want to. They want to actually do it so, you know, it's at least in the year that they're talking about it, right? Yeah. And and once yeah. it comes to console, that's the end of early release, which would then also release them to being able to put things out on Steam. Correct. So that date is fast approaching. It probably hasn't felt like it for folks who refuse to play in the Epic uh, sphere, but yeah, that's coming up pretty fast. Yeah. Um, Interestingly. So that's that's kind of uh, coming up in the forefront. We've got a new pinball mm. show coming this week, um, which yeah. I'm sure that we'll get some announcements out of that. Um, again, since they've been off for a month, there's got to be something that they're ready to talk about. <laughs> Otherwise, why? Uh, I reckon it's I reckon it's going to be quite a big episode potentially. Potentially, like, I reckon they've they've probably been saving up a whole lot of stuff, yeah, um, to to drop. So I'm kind of looking forward to this one. There might be some interesting tidbits in it. Yep. So there's that. Um, their pinball party. Hasn't been That's any... been ticking along, hasn't it? They've been updating content for it, releasing uh, well, new... Been... I don't know what happened. Enabling they new. They haven't released any new tables. They might be adding in older uh, They've enabled catalog content titles. In it. Yes. Yeah. But in terms of the uh, newest tables, I think Garfield or Snoopy, one of those two, was the last of the new um, to get released on that. Yep, true. And that was, was that a year ago? Or, I mean, excuse me, was that in December when that came out? Garfield? No, the uh, um, Pinball Party itself, the app. Oh. oh. I'd have to, you know what? I'd have to go back through the show notes and have a look at our website. Because the reason why I'm asking, that was. <laughs> if, if these things were on exclusive agreement and it was maybe for a year of... Or maybe coming to the end of that cycle. Um, I think I would think it's getting there. Yeah. So why am I saying all this? Because Mel had told us that the goal was in 2022 that they were going to be releasing something on the line of like 21 tables. Um, mm. Now, I'm basing that off of his previous statement from the previous year <laughs> when he said, oh yeah, they will be we're releasing, what do you say, uh, 11? And it wound up being 12 tables because of Indiana Jones. Mm -hmm. um, by the end of 2021, but then he said that their goal was to be ramping up to the point of getting to maybe 22. Um, definitely releasing one table a month was the, was the idea. Well, if we look at what they've released so far this year... Um, and I'm not going to count legacy tables in this. So just purely right. new things. We've got World War Z, uh, Mandalorian, Star Wars Collectibles, uh, Bride of Pinbot, Swords of Fury. Uh, I'm going to throw Indiana Jones into this mix just because that was like the official first table of uh, pinball effects. Mm -hmm. um, Grim, Grim's Tales, uh, Curse of the Mummy, uh, Pinball Noir, and Sky Pirates. So that right there is 10 tables. If you count the six tables from
from Pinball Arcade, if those happen to roll, you know, like license goes and all of a sudden, hey, these are coming to Pinball FX. There's another six mm. tables. Now we're up to 16. That leaves us. Well, we still haven't got an August release. Maybe we're getting an announcement from that with the Pinball Show. I don't know. August, September, October, November, December. There's five more tables coming. That would put us at 21 tables for the year. Yeah, which would meet the quota. It would meet the quota. Um, so I, while you've been talking about that, I've gone back through our shows. Yeah. And in Blockade number 2G7, um, titled Zen Brings Apple to a Pinball Party, that was August 24, 2021, when they announced so a year ago. Zen Pinball Party. Yeah, oh, they announced it, but uh, was it playable at that point? Uh, I'm scrolling, I'm reading. I'd say it was out the, the month after that, so maybe September. Yeah, I think it was out in September. Mm. That makes sense. So, um, so we're where if it's a year, and that was the deal, which seems to be the usual sort of exclusivity period that Zen cuts with all their um, mm -hmm. releases. Um, yes, okay, it was September six that we did a walkthrough okay. on Zen Pinball Party. So, next month is the end of the exclusivity. We could even say September thirty is the end of the exclusivity period. Yeah. So. So there you go. There you go. Possible possibility of those tables finally uh, getting into pinball effects and uh, for a lot of people to be able to play it for the first time. Um, yeah. And I would and certainly look, you know, want, want to play it for the first time uh, on a big screen <laughs> with a controller in my hand rather than thumbs. Yeah. Um, yeah. And who knows? I wonder if, you know, when they actually make the jump over to the more, I guess, you know, quote unquote, growing up version of the the platform whether we're going to see a change in rules right with these some of these more basic tables you know that was a criticism at the time we yes. did we did think that perhaps there was a, a opportunity there to actually bump the, the rules and make them a little bit more deeper so that'd be nice it would be if we yeah because they're good layouts um, um so that's kind of where we're at with what we think is coming is literally just going to be tables and potentially well i shouldn't say potentially I, I, i've got to believe it's they're going to do everything in their power to get those consoles up and running by uh well, by, by, by december 31st well that's <laughs> that's that, that's all they got like all they, they got. i don't know i'd um, love to i don't think we're going to gonna see i don't think we're going to see anything in vr which speaking of even even those headsets um, with regards to is there the you know the the new Meta Oculus Pro Oculus or whatever yeah coming in, that's kind of been like is anybody's guess as to whether when that kind of thing is going to be coming out. Um, so I don't yep. think we're going to see anything. I don't think we'll see anything VR related from Zen until a after the console is released, after early access is done, and after they've gotten uh, cabinet mode uh, worked on again. Because remember, I think that's the next that big piece. Yeah, that that cabinet mode. It's interesting we bring that up because I have a feeling that strategically that's going to be quite important in twenty twenty three. Um, you know, well, maybe that's why we haven't heard anything from Arcade One Up, um, mm -hmm. because obviously Zen is going to be wanting to promote pinball effects. And we heard Mel talk about how online to him is an important feature. Yeah. So if it's a case of getting a cabinet that can run pinball effects and run it online, then the cabinet mode would make sense to, for them to work it out for the PC, get all those kinks run out, how to run two monitors and all your back glass so they can send that info over to Arcade 1UP to then manufacture according to those specs. So you're yeah, right. That That's... becomes a new baseline. Mm -hmm. That that is probably the reason why we have not seen any pinball support this year from any of the manufacturers. Um, and we we know that at the moment the cabinet support in Zen Pinball FX is limited. Yeah. Um, and they they make no apologies for that. They said it's here. It you can use it. It has no limitations. Deal with it until we have time yeah. to fix them. Yeah, I got asked if um, I'd made uh, back glasses for all the new. Uh, games and I was like no because 
I'm not going to bother if Zen is going to do official animated back glasses. <laughs> yes, yeah, there's like, zero point for that. Nope, yeah. I'm not going to put in that effort. Thanks, no. No. I'm good. You know. um, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, it's kind of disappointing that uh, we don't have anything truly exciting to look forward to uh, in terms of, uh, you know, last year everything was new and shiny coming at us, and now it's just mm, yeah. tables to get excited about. Um, yeah. But So it's really down to content now. And, you know, sure, minor improvements to the actual underlying platform. Yeah. Um, but I guess, you know, if we look back, we've got things like programmable tournaments now. Yes. Which we never had before. Well, that's a good, that's definitely good. Um, but I think there's still, I think there's still a fair bit of work to be done on the engine side. Um, I think there's a lot of rough edges still that need to be smoothed out uh, before they can cut console releases if they intend to go down the, the multi platform route with Unreal Engine across all platforms, which they are probably yeah. yeah um so they need to get the house in order before they cut those console releases and i think have a feeling that's the reason why they haven't done consoles yet um because we know in the past the the challenges of actually publishing consoles uh they're non-trivial to release for so you've got to get it right um so yeah i, re I reckon that's an explanation as to why so there's that. Oh, I don't know. What do you uh, What do you all think? There is there. Does anybody have any good rumors? <laughs> yeah, we want to know what the rumors are. I was searching for rumors, like what are digital pinball rumors from at games or arcade one up, and the latest rumors were all from 2021. Um, there's like nothing from 2022. So uh, if you've heard any, we haven't heard anything. So I'd love to know if you've, uh, even if you haven't heard anything. If you have a logical bit of speculation that can make us go, oh, okay, you might have a point, please drop us a note uh, down in the, the old Twitter there uh, or fire us off an email at blah, 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 kate at gmail.com. Or know. if you like to do things in more real time, join oh. us on our new Discord. Oh, that's right. We have a new Discord, folks. Uh, you guys had kept on asking us and we kept on going, no, I don't know. And then one day Jared went, hey, Chris, I created something. I did a thing. <laughs> he did a yep. thing. You know what? It actually came off the back of all the interactions we were having about uh, VPX hmm. in in YouTube. There was a couple of commenters on there. Uh, he said, "You know, it's it's a bit hard to have conversations about this in YouTube comments." And I thought, you know what? Fair point. That that is actually valid. It is actually harder to have long form comments in there. So let's do it in Discord. So what what do they and, need to look up to find us, Jared? Um, that's a that's a very good question. So I think the the forum itself is a public forum. So that means you can search for it in the um, uh, in the communities. Um, and if they do a search for Black A Pinball Podcast, they should find it. But I'm going to put um, a link to the the server in the show notes, and, and we'll probably have it right here also on the old YouTube down below. Yeah, so if you want to go, feel free if you're wanting to have longer form comments. Like, you know, we love comments on on the videos, but yeah, if you want to go longer form, come and join us over in in the, the Discord and uh, introduce yourself over there so we can get to know everyone. There's an introductions channel over there and um, we've got one for episodes. And if you've got any ideas for the show as well, you can go and pop those in there too. So yeah, it's, it's I think it'll sort of, over time, as people learn more about it, they'll probably want to jump in and have yeah. a go. So uh yeah, we'll get you if you're interested. Just uh, have a look around our socials, and we'll we'll do links. I think we can we can do an invite link, but they expire. Yeah. So um, it's a little bit tricky to sort of um, have a perpetual link out there that people can just click on and yeah. join. But I'm sure there's a there's a way of doing it out there. I'll look into it. Um. All right, we're gonna shift gears to what I teased at the beginning there. So, mm -hmm. um, well, before we before we talk about prey. <laughs> I uh, I showed my son. Just I was like, I I don't know if he's gonna like this or not, but fine, whatever. Showed mm. him heat, and he, uh, heat is just—it's an amazing movie. It's just so awesome. But it's also one of those movies that I realized that a lot of it might have been of the time because of yeah. how fresh and new it was then. And a lot of movies since have taken elements 
that they did and used them in their movies so it doesn't pack the wallop to a viewer now who would be experiencing it for the first time. But anyway, um, mm-hmm. showed it to my son. He, he followed along with it. I'm not going to say he dug it, but he was interested the entire time. I went, oh, okay, well, that's interesting. Hmm. Well, he's also, as 16-year-olds of this generation are, very into meme culture. Mm. He's oh, yeah. Forever telling me, no, Dad, that meme is dead. These are the new memes. I'm like, oh, my yeah. God. Your memes are up. stale, Dad. Oh, you completely, suck. completely. Um, <laughs> well, <sighs> Which teenagers will do on a, on a really basis to you as a father. So he's got... Uh, he kept on mentioning that Breaking Bad is in a lot of these memes. And I went, <laughs> yeah. you know what? Fine. Sat him down. Put on Breaking <laughs> Bad. Dude, he is so into it. <laughs> well, why? Yeah. Oh, why well, no, I it's didn't think he would. Show. It's an amazing show, but it's it's a drama and it's slow. And, it is a slow burn. That's and sure. I didn't know if, if it would hold his attention. but And he didn't know if it would hold his attention. We got done with the first episode. Which is a two-hour movie, uh, and, mm. and he just goes, "I don't know why that fascinated me," but he's like, "But that was really good. Let's watch more." So we've been binging the crap out of it. Um, I mean, I think we literally only started two weeks ago, and we're already halfway through the third season. Um, mm. And then I'm like, "That means we get to watch Better Call Saul," and oh, I yes. have not watched this last season, and I'm not going to until he's caught up, and then we'll watch it together. So, um, been been. Avoiding those spoilers. Um, oh, that's hard to avoid. They're everywhere at the moment. I know. So uh, I basically, when I view the internet right now and I'm scrolling through feeds, it's kind of like instant blur on my eyes. If I see anything that, that even remotely says salt, salt uh, I go, I'm, not I'm not seeing anything. Scroll past that. Okay, never looking again. Um, yeah. yeah, that's gee, that's hard. Oh, I've, I've done it before on many shows, though. Um, mm-hmm. But anyway, so then the other thing, because I was like, well, I'm not going to wait to watch this. But So Mm-mm. new Predator movie called Prey comes out yeah. on Hulu and he's never seen a Predator movie but I he was in the room I threw this thing on and pretty quickly he sat on the couch and just decided to watch the rest of the movie good. it's great it is so good it is oh isn't it so good it is easily the second best Predator movie I mean obviously you know you got the, the original first one is the best first one yeah. and then this this movie it's it's a classic Predator tale. Like the the formula is there, right? Oh yeah, but it's the fact that it's set in the far past, seventeen nineteen, to be exact, yeah. on the plains of the uh, American West, with uh, indigenous people doing what indigenous people are doing, which is hunting and living off the land, uh, mm. which is kind of the ethos of a predator. And there's also yes. that idea of you need to go out and prove yourself, um, whether it, and for the males of the tribes, it was always through the hunt. And here you yep. have a gal who's like, you know what? I don't want to be a do hunter. Or I don't want to be a gatherer. I want to be a hunter and prove myself I'm in the sorry. same way. And so it just mirrors that of the predator life. Um, if you're at all familiar with predator lore, that's like a key component well, of it. That's what they do, yeah. Um, and then on, add on top of that, just it visually looks good. It uh, it's got the cinematography a certain, is beautiful. In yeah, it too. It, it's got a slow burn tension in it. Um, mm. It's not, and so I just recently watched Jurassic Park Dominion or mm. Jurassic World Dominion, and I was so just like, whatever. Yeah, I had the same reaction because. Yep. Gone is the wonder and amazement at dinosaurs, and in its place is just here's your dinosaurs. <laughs> yeah, there they are, acting not at all like an animal, and instead acting like you know a machine, like it's a Terminator. Um, and I just I couldn't have cared less. I was just like, whatever. Not to mention, I mean, had a host of other problems, but it, the main thing was it's <laughs> yeah, just it is. <laughs> it, the main thing was I just couldn't care about any of it. It was just like. Is anything was, interesting going to shock me? And it so, was dinosaurs by numbers. Yeah, yeah, mm. and and obviously these later Predator movies have gone kind of that same route where it's like, well, you're not going to yeah. be shocked by a predator anymore, and you know what a predator is, and we're just going to throw it up on the screen and you know let it run around and do its thing. And this movie respected the idea of maybe you don't know what one of these is, and mm. we're going to play it off like that. 
and it worked really well. <laughs> yes. I mean, at the moment, it's easily going to make my top 10 for the year. Mm. Uh, and it's probably easily in the top five right now because it just has stood out to me um, as just a really quality, quality movie. So if you haven't checked it out and you happen to have Hulu, by all means, uh, watch that. You probably would have already checked it out. You probably would have already. It's it's already being listed as Hulu's most watched original film ever. Yeah. (laughs) While you're over at Hulu as well, do check out the latest season of uh, Solar Opposites as well. What is that's it called? Because funny as Solar Opposites. Mm, so it's it's another Justin Roiland um, uh, production where these aliens come from this planet um, and they they land on Earth, they crash on Earth, and they hate it. Like they hate Earth, um, and it's got the like it's got the classic sort of it's got Justin Roiland doing a gruff Rick as the main character's voice and it's you know it's you know who it is hmm. the, the humor is there it's it's funny and it's got the classic Royland story arcs in it um it's highly entertaining the episodes are like 30 minutes solar opposites check it out on hulu really really good series um, more content to watch there's so much content yeah, I have to watch more content I've add got, it to the I've list got, let's see i've got westworld season four that i still need to watch I haven't even cracked yeah. that um I was waiting for this week to get all 10 episodes of Only Murders in the Building season two finished, so then I can watch all of that. Um, mm-hmm. What else have I got on the uh, the docket? I don't know. There's like five shows that I'm just like, they're there. Um, yep. Oh, uh, they'll stay there. Yep. Oh, and I'm watching just because it's easy to watch while I'm like feeling like just numbing the brain. Uh, new Beavis mm-hmm. and Butthead is now out. Oh, actual episodic Beavers and Butthead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't got onto that yet. I've seen the the movie. You saw the movie that they yeah. put out. I saw the movie, and it was yeah, classic Mark Judge. Yep. Uh, <laughs> as are yeah. these. And, yeah, as are the. I'm sure, these are, <laughs> sure they are. It, 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 I love those guys. They're hilarious. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but you're right. It definitely is turn off your brain and just let it flow over. Oh yeah. The other, the other thing I got into, and this is a bit late for me, but I I watched the first season of Reacher. Oh um, yeah. Great series. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. Great story arc in it. Loved it. Well put together. I love how it's designed for streaming too, where the episodes just flow mm-hmm. into each other. Mm-hmm. It's like you could just watch them without breaks and it'd be a contiguous eight hour long movie. Yeah. You know? It. it uh... Who was it? Who was the creator that was saying he hates that? Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think about the show because the show was really good, and I just I was just watching it. Anyway, uh, there was a guy who was saying that his shows that he makes because he came from doing episodic weekly episodic, but now he's got a mm. show that is streaming. Uh, oh, oh, it's the guy that made the boys. Um, oh, right, eh? he said, yeah. He purposely designs the boys as if he was doing weekly episodic that right. each episode has a beginning middle and an end it's not mm-hmm. an, he's not creating an eight hour movie he's creating eight one hour tv shows tv um, shows and he yep. said that he feels that that this idea with streaming and doing an eight hour movie is excessive and it's leading to bloat in some of these shows where they could have been telling a much tighter story had they been designed for beginning, middle, and end. I get what he's saying, but I can't deny that I love it. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I love having not have to skip. Like, if you're watching the episode directly after the first, it's like, I don't need the recap. Fast forward, fast yep. forward. It yep. sort of breaks It breaks the flow of the show, whereas if it's like the next show comes up and immediately you're in there without, like, it's cold open. Yeah. Cold open straight into the, the episode without any sort of title or anything. It's really... Yeah. It makes sense for the for the audience. So I'm, I'm I'm already gearing up though uh, for what once we finish Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, what the next series is. Then I'm going to introduce my son, and I'm thinking Mr. Robot is on the uh, on the oh, agenda. <laughs> that's a that's a good one to introduce him to. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway, um, that's the that. We are going to obviously we won't be back uh, next week. Um, no, especially since I'm working on a Saturday for once. Ugh. 
I haven't oh. had to work one of those since Christmas. Um, <laughs> but uh, we're going to be, we'll hit you guys up probably in about two weeks. Um, obviously commenting on whatever it is that's in this uh, latest pinball show. And uh, we've kind of thrown out the feelers to Mel. Just, again, we like to talk to him at least twice a year. And we're coming up mm. on that time where it's going to be needing to get him in. And he's a busy, busy man. So we got to throw out those feelers yeah. early. And if we always say it's an open invitation with him. So whenever he's available, we'll make it happen, no matter what we had planned. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, we'll um, we'll throw out a show. Where we've done that before. So, do we think that we're going to have Mel on next episode? No, but no. Just saying, uh, it'll be between now and the end of the year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's our roadmap. Exactly. <laughs> and hopefully, we can get an actual roadmap from Zen as to uh, where they're going. Uh, it was nice having that little. You're going to have a Williams. You're going to have an original. You're going to have two Williams and then an original. I hope that they. Uh, I like that. Give us some of that, and that's again. not giving away. That's not giving away too much, but no. it just gives the community something to hold on to. Yep, and it it really does actually help to manage expectations. It's good, so that that pattern should continue. For and sure. and it creates that buzz and that conversation yeah. uh, on the discords and on the reddits and all that stuff. So, all right, that's right. well, that's uh, that's going to do it for us, uh, yeah. as we just discussed. Next time, it's going to be Jared's favorite stuff and things. Until then, folks. Bye-bye. See you later.